welcome to episode one of Scum and Villainy for New Year All. Um, when we do like super quick introductions since it's episode one, uh, I'm Jamie. Uh, I'm at Muffin Manifesto on Twitter. You can call me Muffin if you like. Um, my pronouns are he, they, and I'm a professional voice actor based in Sydney, Australia. And I'm going to be the GM for this uh, exciting space adventure. And um, I'll let everyone else introduce themselves. I'm not sure which order we were in on the overlay, but um, Theta or Griff, do you want to go next and we'll just pass it along? Sure. Uh, I'm Chris. I also go by Griffin. Uh, that's probably what I'm going to be addressed by mostly. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Twitter. In fact, I'm a internet hermit, but I'm on every single game on this channel. So nice to meet everyone out there again. Nice. Um, hey, what's up? I I'm Lane, or Chuck the Chad, or Toad, or really doesn't matter. Uh, my <laughs> pronouns are Cactus. Uh, and okay. such. <laughs> um, uh, I have an Instagram. It's certainly out there. Um, don't search for it. And that's about it. <laughs> uh, Theta? Yeah, I'm Theta or Ractus or Omega or Brand or Bane or whatever. I'm also running the stream, so if you can see me, you already know who I am and where to find me. Yay! Uh, Hidden, do you want to tell us who you are? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so my name's Shannon. Uh, my handle on gaming things is usually Hidden Trade. Um, I am new at this. I've never played a role-playing game online like this. Um, the only thing I've played is d and for the past couple of years in person. So I'll probably be the newbie with a lot of this as a heads up. That's cool. I mean, this system, uh, there's a lot of like back and forth between the players, the GM, like, we, you know, we sort of work together to work out what the situation is. So it's, it's actually, I find very friendly to new players. So that's cool. And uh, finally, last but hopefully not least, uh, I'm Rafael. Um, I'll go by Lessons Learned or simply Lessons. Uh, for short, I'm a streamer and uh, mostly stream RPGs and also lots and lots of giant robots mashing each other on Battletech. So that's that's me. Nice. So sci-fi all the way. Yeah, man. The, the setting doesn't inherently say that there are mechs in it, but there's no reason we can't have giant robots if we want giant robots. No, that's, that's a fine. It's just that's what I do on my channel. So that's, <laughs> among all other right. things. Well, um, let's talk uh, scum and villainy then. I'll, I'll, I'll do a little spiel for you guys. Um, excuse me talking for a bunch of minutes on end, but um, just to go, give you all a bit of a feel for the setting. Um, yeah, so in scum and villainy, you guys are going to be playing a bunch of scoundrels. You're, you're on the edge of the law, usually ne'er-do-wells, making your way in what's called the, the Procyon Sector. 20. Um, the sector uh, is part of uh, an empire called the Galactic Hegemonic Alliance. Uh, and you can expect things like spaceships, blasters, aliens, and strange space mystics who are legally distinct from Jedi. Uh, you and uh, the crew will be running your fixer up ship and the business thereon, uh, taking on. Uh, legal or less than legal jobs to improve your status and assets amongst the various factions of of the sector. Um, but the game really focuses in on like the high moments of adventure and uh, cutting to the action, um, with like occasional flashbacks to plans made in advance, uh, as well as um, being split into like two 
sort of distinct phases like so you've got the big score the missions and then we get to see what your characters do in their downtime between jobs when you're recovering from wounds meeting up with friends to find new jobs and pursuing your various personal interests that kind of thing um the touchstones for for the setting are obviously star wars uh, guardians of the galaxy firefly uh cowboy bebop um all that kind of thing and it, it does it, uh, it the expanse is probably the the most uh, current version of the of the genre um yeah and um i'll read this little blurb about the setting as it were so the year is 1261 since the founding of the galactic hegemonic alliance which uh united the various factions at war uh, of humanity after the last dark age um somewhere near the center of the galaxy lies the uh imperial seat of the hegemon who rules with a grand council comprised of powerful families and greedy merchant guilds um but the galaxy is vast and the procyon sector is too many jumps away from that core to matter at least to those big important head honchos it has some well mapped hyperspace lanes though and four separate systems which you can see here on the on the map um breck halt iota and rin uh which are made up of various uh planets and moons that are habitated um and there are jump gates uh, that allow you to pass between these various systems. This far out, though, there is less of a ubiquitous presence of uh, the hegemon's justiciars or the 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 legion, the armada. It's more local constabularies who are um, at war with pirate queens or underworld syndicates, and you know overseeing legitimate businesses or more ambitious less legal side projects such as uh, the guild corps um and the worlds here are, are known to be peppered with ruins from an ancient civilization which is officially referred to as the precursors um though the few remaining links to that are are known as the ur just you are um, and there are a bunch of uh, robots in the sector who call themselves Urbots, who are sort of more sentient than your, your standard droid. And um, no one knows exactly how they're tied to like the my mystic galactic ley lines that are strong in this sector. Humans and aliens live and work side by side. You guys can choose to play it as Zeno if you want. Um, there's but generally uh everyone sort of either banded together either to support the the hegemony or uh to try and work against it or underneath its law so that's the that's the setting you guys will be playing as i said the crew of a single ship and mm -hmm. um sort of the the first the, the first session of forging the dark games i think it's really important to like get the crew in together on uh what kind of ship you want to run and um indeed the first step of character creation is actually uh crew and ship creation as it were so um if you guys flip in your books to the the ship creation section we'll do the first like couple steps of this and then we'll jump back to uh like the individual character creation process so in scum and villainy there are three core types of ship that you can choose to um to be a crew on there is the star dancer which is usually made up of smugglers illicit merchants uh, blockade runners people doing odd jobs small thefts finding lost items um think you're Han Solo and Chewie, your Firefly crew, that kind of gang. Um, alternatively, you can be a crew on a Cerberus ship who are your hardcore bounty hunters and extraction specialists, usually um, 
covered in required weaponry to undertake such um, dangerous jobs and uh, finding missing people or items, claiming hegemonic uh, bounties um, on people who they consider dangerous or important enough. That's the, that's the lot of a Cerberus crew. And last but not least, you could be a, a, a fire drake crew who are, you know, let's not say criminals, let's say rebels hunted by the law and often beloved of like the citizenry, the people of the, the system looking to do jobs that free the oppressed and protect the downtrodden uh, and fighting against the iron fist of the hegemony, that kind of thing. Now, all of this is to say, no matter which ship you're on, you know, a crew on a star dancer could just as easily fight uh, the oppressive hegemony or the crew of a Cerberus could be doing small smuggling jobs like a, a fire dancer crew. It's more just sort of like a, a flag of what kind of um, jobs the crew is sort of interested in being like the core activity and um, as such, uh, it would sort of like determine your ship type. A fire drake, for example, is a much bigger ship. It, it's a it's a orbit ship. You don't you don't land on a planet with your fire drake, except in dire circumstances, you'd be shuttling down to planets. Uh, whereas if you're on a a star dancer or a Cerberus, they're sort of a bit smaller and more maneuverable. And especially like the Cerberus is good at uh, flying into into small spaces uh, in order to chase targets um yeah so i guess uh i just wanted to open up the floor to you guys in terms of what crew types sort of appeal to people generally um yeah is there anything like the the book itself says um you know that this should be a very open discussion it's not really up to me as it were um and we should choose a ship type that sort of excites everyone it's if if you're feeling lukewarm about one of the one of the options, uh, you should speak up because um, you know if we're going to run a campaign in this setting, it's important that people are like interested in the idea of what our crew is going to be doing. All right. So I've looked at this before, and I think I even uh, thought a little bit. I'm definitely more interested in like the rebel and smuggling ship than I am like the bounty hunting one, just out mm -hmm. of like personal preference. Uh, but ultimately, I'm down for anything because I'm just a down for anything kind of guy. <laughs> nice. All right. So, what about the rest of you? Yeah, Sand Dance, Star Dancer seems fine. Um, mm -hmm. As first option, Fire Drake will probably be my second one, and Cerberus will be the third. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. The general anyway. feel so far seems to be like people aren't as keen on being. You know the Mandalorian bounty hunters, and are more interested in the sort of. Ironically, that was my first option, but <laughs> I'm down for being a rebel. That's what other people want to be. I think the rebel's my favorite, but I am happy with the other. Um, I'd be cool to play any of them. I'm pretty excited about Severus. I'm not gonna lie. The, the idea of chasing down just people along the galaxy and just being like pew pew is pretty cool to me. But I'm I'm also kind of down for it. I think I, I enjoy the idea of all of it quite a bit. Yeah, well, like 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 we said, I mean, none of the none of the job types are exclusive to to the the ship. So there's certainly um, no reason why you know the crew of a a fire drake or a a star dancer won't end up needing to chase down a, a bounty. Yeah, um, and I can see to... with the the type of people that are probably going to want to play those roles. Like we could have our bounty hunting section of the crew in our rebel section of the crew, and that'd be fine. We just have to decide like which ship like most benefits like everyone here. Yeah, we take out bounty yeah, so the bounty hunters rather people. be on the rebel ship, or the rebels rather be bounty hunting. <laughs> well, yeah, I can well, see it being a good cover too. If you're if you actually are a rebel to you know have your ship manifest say that you're bounty hunters or something like that <laughs> and uh, it gives you a cover to like get intel spread the word yeah look i can say in terms of the way like the faction game side of the the game uh plays out you're gonna end up on 
the wrong side of the hegemony kind of no matter what you do they're, 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 they are very sort of strict law keepers etc and no one no one who wants to be doing fun stuff in space ends up on the right side of the law um a lot of this choice ultimately comes down to do you guys want to be on like a a real big sort of like uh ship with you know a bunch of crew members and stuff and and sort of be like shuttling down to planets or do you guys want to be part of like the sort of more ragtag um Han Solo or Firefly or Expanse kind of crew where your ship can actually get down uh, into orbit and be part of that sort of more uh, blockade runnery style of gameplay. So with the, I, uh... I think for like the bigger ship, I'd like to ask like everyone else: Is anyone feeling like they're the captain? <laughs> I'm the captain now. All right, if you're going to be the captain, do you want the bigger <laughs> ship? Do you feel like happening a lot of people or just a couple people? Oh geez, that's like that's that's a that's a that's a. It, it's just going to be us personally, and you're uh, berating your friends into doing their jobs. Or are you going to actually manage a crew? Yeah, no. Let's go with the small one, guys. That sounds like, <laughs> like <laughs> this just became a lot of responsibility all of a sudden. <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, I just got to do so much. Like, God, I do... here like every character I've been playing lately has been like more responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I already played as Star Captain, which was pretty awesome, but, uh, you know, I like to have some variety for a change. I've actually never been in charge, so I would like yeah. to be in charge. Okay, <laughs> and if you feel more comfortable being over a smaller crew, uh, I propose let's take the smaller ship out of the two and go yeah. with that. All right, it sounds like we're, we're leaning towards Star Dancer. And lo like I said, this isn't this doesn't preclude you from, you know, uh, from, taking from doing other activities, the hegemony. but the yeah. primary like thing for each mission is going to be we have a job to do. Let's go do the job. Yeah. And, and we look, start from it, probably a general illegal standpoint rather than one of like we're the rebels and they're going to notice us if we arrive. Let, let let's yeah. not uh go too far off the off the end and say a legal standpoint. I mean you guys are it, this start answers are on like um a, as a ship type they're particularly good for you know smuggling illicit goods mm -hmm. and and stuff but they are also yeah, you, you're 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 not wanted throughout the system. For yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Yet. more more Yet. petty theft and crime. Yeah, we'll, we'll Yet. make it happen. We'll make everyone want our blood. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Um. So, uh, the the ship. Uh, you guys as a crew begin with two cred. Um, money in Forging the Dark Games is sort of abstracted. You know, we don't keep track of your. Uh, coppers and pennies that you use to to pay off people on the side but um you guys will earn cred and the way to think of cred you know, is like a briefcase full of cash or you know like this is like a single cred is enough to um repair or buy a new system on a small ship like it it's serious money and um uh you know part of the part of the scum and villainy crew uh lifestyle is making a bunch of cred and then burning it quickly as well you know um some characters might be interested in trying to improve their life by hoarding their cash in their in their personal stash but uh most characters in my experience want to try and live fast and loose um so i will mark uh let's it, on our ship sheet that we're going to do a star dancer it should pre-fill a bunch of stuff, and I will add two cred to the ship. Uh, I'll pull up that uh, character sheet for you all. Nice. Um, now, the second step of ship creation is that as a crew, you've got to decide on a reputation. This is like a single word that describes um, the the way in which other people perceive the the crew the crew themselves might not think of themselves as strange or savvy or subtle particularly or maybe they do but um this is definitely just how what what sort of reputation you guys have as a crew already you know um the 
when we jump into the action, it won't necessarily be the first job you've all done together. Maybe some of you are new to the crew, but um, you guys have a reputation as a ship, as a crew already. The ones that they suggest in the book that you can choose between are ambitious, brutal, daring, honorable, professional, savvy, subtle, or strange. I'll, I'll um, post those in the Roll20 chat as options, but you don't have to choose one of those. If someone has an idea riffing off any of that, uh, just any single word works in this particular case. Um, and playing towards this uh, in play will earn your crew experience. So like, it, it is actually relevant to the reward system of the game as well. Can I um, add party bus? Party bus. <laughs> oh, I think idea. I have an idea what lesson interesting. Jeez, yeah, okay. We're starting off strong, I see. <laughs> so Just we're going idea. double speaker then, are we? <laughs> <laughs> uh I know what my personality is like and what games that I'm involved kind of end up being, which is uh towards the more subtle, incredibly long term gambit kind of plans. Mm -hmm. uh, and I understand a bit how Theta plays, where uh, he has like a very sort of fatalistic play style to his characters, because that's fun for him. Uh, and that already makes it very hard to find a middle ground between those two. So I'm yeah. going to look to like the other three and ask, like, what, what, how do you normally play? What kind of shenanigans do you guys normally get up into? It depends on the character. Word, uh, yeah. How does the word wicked sound to everyone? Wicked. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking I had two words in mind as soon as you said it. I said I, I thought wicked and then I thought tubular. Oh, okay. <laughs> gnarly like, bro. Gnarly. Me, gnarly. It has other connotations. <laughs> this to me sounds like how the captain thinks of himself, not necessarily how other no, people the crew, see the it. Just wicked, and it can be used in multiple ways. You know, like we're uh, we're cool, but we're also very strict and rude and disrespectful, and you know, we we take what we want when we want it. You know. Very piratey style. Okay. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing words. Yeah, so a, a very show-off attitude, which I think probably will work somewhat with uh, with Theta. So we already got like some stuff going on there. What about you two? Um, I think, personally, I like Subtle a lot, but maybe as kind of a middle ground to bring these things together. Um, daring might work. It's kind of got the wicked, and it's kind of elements of all these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, daring and ambitious. We're going for like you know being savvy, not savvy, but uh, ambitious and daring probably cover those. So you know, if you think you can take on the world or the galaxy, then certainly either one of those two would fit. Yeah, uh, and ambitious was also well, daring also would fit would be more subtle in a way, because you know you you try stratagems and ideas that normally would not right I, I think daring might be the word that best fits off with like a show offy kind of attitude yeah yeah and of course like you know this doesn't this will um it will manifest itself differently in different characters as well you know what is daring for our wicked captain in terms of like uh being the, the first one into the front lines and um etc will be different to you know a subtle a uh, ship operator or something who think but mm -hmm. who can you know run the the asteroid belt in under you know 30 seconds or whatever that's, or that, that's a very different kind of daring yeah that's right yeah there you go all right let's um let's put daring in our reputation uh here now um there are a bunch of other uh stuff that we can do for the ship now where um uh like we add some customizations we so uh I know there's like a, a lot to parse all at once, but your ship sort of has four core systems, which are hull, engines, comms, and weapons. Uh, mm -hmm. As a start answer, you start with two in hull and one in engines. Um, engines is basically how fast and maneuverable you are. Hull is um, like what the inside of the ship and and its like actual capacity are like. Um, so on a start answer, you start not only with a cargo hold as part of your hull, you also start with smuggling compartments, which means that you can have both illicit and illicit goods. Um, uh, but the stuff you have in your smuggling compartment will um, 
will be hidden from most like standard scans and inspections. Uh, your system in engines is a jump drive, which every ship has. Um, a, that that allows you to to uh, use the the jump gates to move from uh, sector to sector. Um, you will also get to improve two uh, of these, and and you'll get to pick a special ability for the crew and assign some extra upgrades. But before we go into that, I think usually at around this time is the is the best time. To, to jump back into individual characters um because i think uh those upgrades and stuff they start to tie us to factions and it's a good it's better to have like a an, an idea of who our crew are and how they might be tied to the factions before before we get into that stuff so uh the first step of character creation for everyone is to choose a playbook um like in many games, these don't have to be exclusive, especially because we've got a fairly big cast. Five is fairly large for a Forge in the Dark game, but um, it's okay if we have two pilots or two uh, mechanics, etc. But I'll, I'll just do a super quick blurb on the um, on the various uh, on the various character types, and then I'll see if there's anything jumping out to particular players. Just jump to this in the book. So, uh, the first playbook type is a mechanic, a gearhead, a gearhead, and hacker. Mechanics are good at fixing up the ship's engines or constructing specialized safe crackers to break into hegemonic vaults. Uh, mechanics are invaluable assets on most jobs. You could be a mousy one who has all the fancy toys, or a more hands-on uh, gearhead lugging your stuff around. Um, when something breaks, the mechanic is the one to call. And when you play a mechanic, your your uh, playbook specific experience trigger is addressing challenges with technical skill or ingenuity. The next playbook is the muscle, a dangerous and intimidating fighter. Most crews have one. The Procyon sector isn't a safe place, and when negotiations and slick words fail, it's a good time for blasters, ship cannons, and close swift violence. This is the domain of the muscle. You could be a protector, an enforcer, a border, a quiet threat on the back burner, but you cannot be ignored. As a muscle, you earn experience when you address challenges with force or threats. Someone could choose to be a mystic, a galactic wanderer in touch with the way, which is legally distinct from the force and Jedi. Uh, <laughs> your powers make you a force to be reckoned with in Procyon. And that's right. Uh, mystics are good at handling mysterious uh, artifacts or calming strange creatures in the dead of space. Uh, and when you play a mystic, you'll earn experience when you address challenges with wisdom or the way. The next playbook is the pilot, a ship handling wizard and danger addict. You're the crew's speed demon and get out of trouble card. When the chips are down and the legions on your tail, there's nobody else that you'd rather turn to than your daring pilot. Uh, you might take desperate risks or thrive when the chips are down, but you're always ahead of the pack. As a pilot, you earn experience when you address challenges with speed or flair. A, the, the next book is The Scoundrel, a scrappy and lucky survivor. Neither the most reputable nor the one to choose the safe route. You're a smooth-talking criminal, and luck is just one of your many skills. Charming rogues with tricks up their sleeves. Uh, whilst it is true that anyone in Procyon can get themselves into trouble, scoundrels tend to be the best at getting in and getting out. Uh, as a scoundrel, you'd earn experience when you address challenges with charm or audacity. Uh, I think the second last, I mean, yeah, the second last playbook is the speaker. Uh, a speaker is a respectable person on the take. You leave the blatant crimes to the rest of the crew. Instead, your forte is sophistication and polite society, leveraging connections to get ahead of the next job before you even start. When things go south, speakers have a plan or a friend who might help out. And afterwards, you know you can smooth things over and keep things under wraps. If you play a speaker, you earn experience when you address challenges with deception or influence. 
And the final playbook is The Stitch. The Stitch is our good doctor, a spacefaring healer or scientist. Respected across the sector, the ability to heal is one of the most valuable out on the edge of hegemonic space. Uh, properly trained physicians are, if not welcomed, are at least treated well, pretty much anywhere you go. For crews that tend to take a few injuries, a stitch capable of knitting bones and patching blaster bones is always a welcome addition. And if you play a stitch, you earn experience when you address challenges with insight or compassion. I'm sure there, uh, in reading through those, there are a bunch of characters from your, your favorite sci-fi who you can fit into just about any of these uh, playbooks. Is anything jumping out to anyone immediately as something they, they want to uh, oh, I, I already chose a scoundrel. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to be a scoundrel? We have our captain who could probably fit like a number of different things. I was thinking probably along lines like speaker, pilot, or mystic. So I could fit okay. into something there. Uh, and I guess I'm curious what uh what the other two are thinking. Um, yeah, I, any ideas? What's jumping yeah, up here? I guess my top ones would be uh, mechanic, um, pilot potentially, or stitch. Um, but mechanic is probably my top choice if nobody else wants it. Yeah, well, like I said, I mean there there is room to double up if if people wanted to because the um the way in which these systems work like taking different abilities and uh like choosing different action ratings and stuff will make characters feel distinct anyway but it sounds like you're leaning mechanic which is a good one to have on board um captain toad do you have an idea who where, what you're leaning towards yeah actually i was thinking muscle all right so we've got a we've got a a big a muscular captain this will be fun <laughs> <laughs> An intimidating fighter on the front lines. I'm I'm digging it. Uh, Theta, any ideas? So just to recap so far, what we've got, we have a muscle. We have. Mm -hmm. I'm pointing in directions that this isn't going to work on the overlay. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're they're all that way. Too, I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. So we got the muscle. Then we got the scoundrel. <laughs> then we got a mechanic. And mm. what were you going with, Griff? Mystic. A speaker probably is the first choice, but we'll see. Hmm. Because I was either thinking Stitch or Mystic then. Okay. Yeah, so if you want to take a first pick at Mystic, go ahead and grab it. I don't have to be the weird old guy. Uh, or you could be the Stitch, which is definitely... Incredible. I love playing old men. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. got a captain the old man. You don't, He's me. You don't need a doctor on board. I'm sure you guys won't end up in trouble with wounds and stuff i'm the you old man now pilot either you know the ship flies itself <laughs> autopilot man come on it's, it's revolutionizing the world world yeah i'm mean, to be fair you just set the ship to go forwards and there's not a lot to hit <laughs> space is wide open i mean i guess i'm also could be like a former fighter pilot that's it right any yeah. anyone on the ship who has um who, who takes some some training helm. in the helm action yeah. will be able to fly the ship. You don't need to have a pilot playbook. Uh, someone who pilot chooses just to play the cool pilot is, to yeah, yeah, they're just like the, um, you know, they're the, Sessions. the hotshot kind of pilot. Whereas you guys might be more of a, yeah, look, the ship is just our boat, and we know how to operate it, but we don't necessarily uh, want to try and outrun fast-paced bounty hunters, etc. So, if you um, if you pull up your for, for those of you who have uh, um picked a, a playbook, if you um, if you pull up your your character sheet and then where it says playbook in sort of grey text, if you type in that that playbook and hit enter, it will actually pre-fill um a bunch of stuff for you. It did, in fact, it's crazy. Uh, Hidden, are you, are you going to go with mechanic? Um, yeah, I think that sounds good. Cool. So we got a mechanic, uh, our muscle captain. Um... So that's weird when you say it that way. <laughs> a muscle captain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and lessons you're going scoundrel, yeah? Yeah.
And Griff, did you decide on speaker? Uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and go with speaker. Nice. You're the respectable face of our, our star dancer crew. Respectable. Yes. <laughs> respectable. So that's the first word we all use, right? I'll uh, just wait till you guys get to know me. Um, and Teddy, did you make a final decision between Mystic or Stitch? Oh yeah, old man, all the way. I know, you're thinking, that could be both. Bones was an old man. Yeah, I, I was just thinking, I mean, Doctor can be old too as well, I guess. Yeah, as much as I wanted to try out being the moral compass, Griff knows I'll never be the moral compass. <laughs> I, I unfortunately have to agree with you there. You are the most likely to murder someone in cold blood during the game. I was advocating stepping on children before, so... Whoa. So we have our local Sith Lord, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Someone's gotta do it, man. Look, you said Someone. daring. You didn't say good or bad. You said daring. <laughs> That's right. All right, well, now that everyone has uh, chosen a playbook, um... You'll, you'll notice that at the uh, at the top of each of these playbooks, um, you you begin with a starting ability. Um, I might get each of you to read out what your starting ability is. I'm just going to go around the clock on my screen. So Griff, tell us what is the speaker's starting ability? Ah, uh, taking a look, it looks like he has the air of respectability. Uh, you mm -hmm. get extra downtime activities to acquire assets or lay low. Nice. So you'd be good at reducing the heat of the crew or finding um, various assets to help out on the next job. Yeah. Uh, Kidden, what's what's the mechanics starting ability? Uh, it looks like it's Tinker. When you work mm -hmm. on a clock with a with rig or hack. Um, or when you study a schematic, you get uh, plus one sec. Yeah, so um, this is a good time to just have a, a quick chat about clocks. That doesn't mean literally working on grandfather clocks inside the <laughs> the, the, the uh, cargo bay. Um, clocks are sort of one of the key mechanics of Forge in the Dark games. Um, they uh, come in... Oh, I just... I'll jump over to the start answer, which I think we have on screen. Um, they're, they're sort of like segmented circles. You can think of them as clocks or pies. They look a bit like this. I'm hoping that can be seen on the screen. And uh, as you take actions like to complete a task, say I say you guys were trying to escape from space cups or whatever, I might create a clock and call it escape from space cups. Um, Not taking me alive. <laughs> That's it. And I might say, oh, look, these cops are pretty pretty good, so this is going to be an eight clock. And then you guys would describe your actions and, and make rolls and such. And as you succeeded, um, I would fill in, like, sections of this clock, as you can see, like this. And once you reach eight, you have successfully escaped esca the said space cops. Um, so as a mechanic, uh, say, if you, got, if you needed to hack into a... Uh, a locked uh, cyber door or something like that or if you were studying schematics in order to like learn how to rig new stuff onto your ship or whatever you um you would just start your those clocks with the segment already um oh no right whenever you work on that you get an extra segment so even just like a baseline success might get you three segments instead of two on any any clocks very nice um Cool. Uh, lessons. Talk to me about the scoundrel's starting ability. Okay, here's where English is my second language. Um, serendipitous. Mm -hmm. Your crew starts with plus one gambit when the pool resets. resets. Yeah. So, um, gambits are a mechanic that basically allow you as a crew to get extra dice for your roll. Whenever there's... Um, Whenever you guys are rolling one of your actions, basically to to solve a problem or um, conflict or uh, conversation, etc., you're going to roll a number of d6 uh, equal to your action rating in a particular action. Mm -hmm. um, there are, however, 
having zero dice doesn't mean you can't do an action. It just means you roll two and take the lowest. Oh. When when you roll, um, normally you just only look at the highest dice. And on a six, you guys get a, um, you get what you want, right? It's an uh, unqualified success. On a four or five, you succeed at getting what you want, but there's also going to be complications based on how dangerous the situation is. And on a one to three, you fail and should expect the worst. Um, however, there are ways to get extra dice on any roll. So even if you had zero dice in uh, scramble and you were trying to uh, make it through the 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 closing cyber door before it um, it locked you out of uh, the location you needed to get to, you could roll your zero dice in scramble and just roll two and take the lowest and hope you got there. Or you could ask for bonus dice. There are a few core ways to get this. The, the most basic way is to ask for help. Any other member of the crew can take one stress in order to give you plus one dice if they can describe how they fictionally help you in the situation. And that's called an assist die. You can also push yourself and take two stress on your own sheet uh, for an extra die in any ability at any time. Or instead of pushing yourself for stress, you could negotiate a devil's bargain with me, which is to say like a consequence that you cannot avoid uh, that will get you an extra dice. So for example, you might be, you might say, yeah, I want to scramble to make it under the door in time. Um, GM, do you have a devil's bargain? And I might say, yeah, um, yeah, I'll give you a bonus dice to make it under that door in time. But there's going to be someone on the other side of that door who you weren't expecting to be there. And that, and if you say yes, that person will definitely be there when, when okay. uh, the scramble takes place. Um, the last way to get a bonus dice in Scum and Villainy is to spend a gambit. Uh, every every crew gets I, I think it's two gambits at the beginning of each mission um anytime you roll a six on a risky roll you will mm -hmm. generate another gambit so um as long as you didn't spend a gambit uh on that roll but yeah so th th this is like the, sp the the pool of um special source that the crew has to mm -hmm. to really um lay it on for where, when a role is important. Uh, and the scoundrel is particularly good at uh, uh, generating, gambit, yeah. generating gambit, gambits. And that's right. Just for having a scoundrel on board, you guys get an extra gambit every time we reset the pool. Um, cool, cool. And there are, I think, some other scoundrel abilities later on that you can take, which uh, mean that you can uh, make more gambits for the crew as well. Nice. Um, I did mention there when roles are risky. This is act, this doesn't this isn't just like a fictional thing. There is a, a, a mechanic. Basically, anytime you guys are going to make a role, uh, it's my job to determine whether you're in a sort of safe and controlled position, or a risky position, or even a desperate position. And basically, what this will mean is that the consequences of the role, if you don't get a six, will be of higher stakes. Um, However, anytime you roll an action in a desperate position, you get experience in that in that area. You'll notice that the um, the actions uh, are divided into four sections. So you've got under insight, you have doctor, hack, rig, and study. Under prowess, you have helm, scramble, scrap, and skulk. And under resolve, you have attune, command, consort, and sway. And so if you were um, trying to convince a high level hegemonic police captain that um, you're actually a member of his squad, that would be a very desperate sway role. Mm -hmm. And um, you'd get a chance to make that role. And especially if you were good at swaying, maybe you'd succeed. But um, you would always earn an experience for accepting to make a role in a desperate situation. Um, when we get to the action, I'll also describe like effect, but basically along with determining your position for each role, um, each role will have an effect level. So, you know, trying to convince someone that you, you're their brother, probably a desperate action with little to no effect. Trying to convince them that you knew their brother might have great effect because they have great affection for their brother. And we're, we'll get more into that as, as we get into the action.
uh, I realized I sort of interrupted our own flow. We were going over yeah. um, starting abilities. So, yeah. uh, Captain, what what is the uh, the muscles starting ability? I am unstoppable. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to push myself to do one of the following: perform a feat of physical force that verges on the superhuman. So, like, I become superman for five seconds, or I can engage. A small gang of in yeah, on equal footing in close combat sessions. Yeah, nice. So uh mechanically pushing yourself means taking two stress, but it will it does also get you an extra dice for that action. So yeah, our captain is um able of performing superhuman uh feats of strength, whether that's um punching their way through a metal door or engaging a gang of people as if they were on equal footing it's um pretty uh pretty uh intimidating starting ability i think and finally our our old man mystic apparently um data what's the starting ability for the mystic i have the way i can spend a gambit instead of paying any stress cost yeah nice so you could use a, a gambit um any time yeah, the stress is often used to push yourself as we or, or assist as we discussed which gambits can kind of already be done the other way that um stress costs work uh whenever i tell you there's a consequence of your actions what's interesting about forge in the dark games is that isn't set in stone you can always say uh no i don't want to get shot in the leg thanks and uh, you will roll what's called a resistance roll. If someone shoots you in the leg, for example, it's likely to be a prowess resistance roll. So um, to dodge out of the way in time or um, for it to have only grazed you or something like that. Um, and to do that, you roll a number of dice equal to how many um, dots you have in like the leftmost column under that uh, category. So if you had one dot in helm one dot in scramble and one dot in skulk that would mean that you had three prowess for resisting uh physical consequences um insight resistance is usually for like uh resisting consequences of knowledge or understanding and resolve is uh resisting uh consequences of like willpower and uh stuff related to uh mysticism and the way so as a mystic, uh, when you when you resist, if you happen to uh, the the way it works is um, you take six stress minus the highest die result. So when you resist, you might take zero stress, or if you roll a, a one as your highest, you might take five stress. But as a mystic, you can choose instead to spend a gambit instead of taking that five five stress. Um, there are also uh, other ways of pushing yourself in the game, like we heard with the muscle. Um, and later on, the mystic can use that uh, special ability to use gambits instead of stress in those situations as well. All right, so we now know your starting ability. <clears throat> However, you also get to choose one of the special abilities on the list below that. Uh, each character starts with two abilities, their starting ability and one of the special abilities. Um, if you've had a chance to look at those, has anyone decided what their starting special ability might be? Griff, it uh, looks like... I've definitely had a long look at this, so I've already come in prepared. Okay. Uh, I've definitely been considering heart to heart, and given what okay. you've already explained, being able to clear a stress from me and the person I talk to sounds really nice. Yeah, stress, stress is like your core resource for, for for missions and getting stuff done yeah um, so we have one person who lets us use more gambit to use more resources we have someone else who can not take stress and just use whatever he wants and then i can remove the rest of it so we can be a really risky team then yeah no i think heart to heart's a great ability um do you want to do you want to read it out uh just so that we know what the how okay. how you clear that stress? Quote, then uh when you provide a meaningful insight or heartfelt advice that a crewmate follows you both clear one stress all right so you're yeah if you if you give someone a good idea and they follow on it then you both get to uh, mm -hmm. reduce your stress in the situation which is nice 
Anyone else got an idea for which special ability they want to take? Uh, I'm thinking about just go straight uh, and go for the never tell me the odds because why mm -hmm. not stack up? I mean, the other one was tenacious, but I don't All know. Right. I just well, felt why, like... why didn't you read read them out for us? And well, the first one never tell me the odds. You never you generate gambits on desperate rolls. You may also mm -hmm. generate gambits even if you spent the gambit. Yeah, so, so this is like the, the rule that the, you, you cannot spend when. You yeah, you get to you get to break those rules, and you also generate gambits on desperate, which means that like yeah, whenever you get yourself into a a tough situation, you're still going to be um, making life easier for you and the crew more mm -hmm. than other characters. What what's the other one you were considering? Uh, tenacious penalties from harm are one level less severe. Through though level four harm is still fatal, of course. Um, yeah, so. Harm in, harm in this system is sort of abstracted uh, into three levels. You can take two level one harm, two level two harm, one level three harm, and no level four harm without dying. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, if you have a level one harm, which might be like scraped and bruised or something like that, you would have less effect in situations where that harm is relevant. So you might, if you were scraped and bruised, you might lose a dice. Uh, sorry, you, you might be less effective at running away or getting into a fight. If you had a level two harm because a enemy mystic used the way on you to, to shake your confidence or whatever, mm -hmm. then you would have uh, minus one dice to anything that required you to be confident or, or use your resolve probably. Um, and yeah, a tenacious character uh, basically gets to shrug off harm in, in a more meaningful way. So I guess it um, that choice is basically whether you want to be uh, better in in uh, in a scrap or sort of buy into that whole like gambit resource generation sort of um, stuff that and well and um, I'm going to put this to the to the crew uh, because of course generating more gambits means that it affects everybody so right? it's like oh yeah you get that extra die but. People show up, they shouldn't be. <laughs> they just like, yeah. Do I it. need more gambits. I use gambits. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> but at the yeah, same time, it's like, oh, yeah. essentially you're trading, you know, present bonuses for future problem, which could be like the next thing that happens. It's like, oh, there's a, le a waiting squadron of, the, the, of a legion waiting for you to, to arrest you. It's like, well, that, that happened. And everybody turns to me and goes like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Did you do? You had to. It, okay. So I leave it up to the crew whether they. I, I like the idea of just sort of piling on the gambits, but uh, I don't want to do that. And then it was like, ah, oh, yeah, my, I lost two characters back to back because this guy over there just wanted to roll and die. That's nice. So if not, I'll go back to my backup. I, so. I, I will say, as someone who's played a lot of the these Forge in the Dark games, putting yourself into desperate situations and getting the gang in trouble is the way to play in fact there's there is um an experience trigger for the crew is uh whether the crew expresses their inner conflict and essential nature of being daring and it sounds like that might play into being daring that uh, okay. the uh never tell me the odds never tell me the odds does sound like quite the idea since we're going with the daring crew mm -hmm. yeah the name okay. itself fits with the whole yeah, idea so just piling up more and more of the chances to just take risks sounds just absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Oh, okay. We'll then. take all of them, and then we'll just mechanically wash them all away. Well, then, then uh, it, uh, never tell me the odds it is, and where do I mark um, it on the page? Uh, so if you go into your character sheet, I think um, if you scroll down on the left side, mm -hmm. uh, it should be pre-filled because we've put scoundrel in as your, as your okay. type. And you just... Uh, yeah, on the um the little triangle next to never tell me the odds. If you click that, it should light up. This I don't know if it's me, but since the color it's a light blue, we find it a little hard to uh, to see here. Oh, this is a way. Uh, scrappy add modify. Uh, so you, I think you're looking at the um at the like settings section. Yeah. Yeah, you don't. You can close that. It's actually on the the main character sheet. Oh, the main character sheet. Okay, with stress, yeah. harm, recovery. Yep. On the left hand it. side, if you scroll down. Yep. So you just click the little triangle next to it. Never tell me the odds, and it should light up as well. 
It says serendipitous. I don't know why it's... Uh... Ooh, they, yeah, because that's your starting ability, so you oh, have okay. that one as well. Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now it's yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they're go. already written. I just have to highlight them. Yeah, okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. Cool. Um, later on, as you guys level up, you can take veteran to let you take special abilities from other playbooks. Uh, you mm -hmm. when, when you do that, you will need to like actually type them in because we don't have... Um, yeah every single so ability much. on every single sheet mm -hmm. but, uh. mm -hmm. all right uh hidden have you had a look at special abilities for your mechanic um yeah i had a question about it um yeah, for sure. do you get special abilities more of them over time or this is kind sure of do. For... okay cool. no, yeah yeah you do so so the way advancement works in this game uh i talked a little bit about game experience for desperate actions and that goes directly into um uh, the attribute tracks of insight, prowess, or resolve. But at the end of each session, we're going to uh, run through like the experience checklists or whatever, and you get to choose where that experience goes. It can go either into one of those attributes, or um, you'll see on your sheets where it says playbook advancement. And if you fill up that track, you get to take a new special ability. Okay, cool. Then I think the one I'll take to start is um, analyst. When you hack a system, you may also ask a question about the owner or location of the system, as though you've rolled a six on gather in. And when you resist the consequences of hacking, roll a plus one die. All right, we got our we got our computer system specialist. I'm I'm on board. That sounds great. Yeah, gather info rolls um, tend to be like separate from action rolls. They're often what's called a fortune roll, which means that they they don't have a position or effect because you don't necessarily have um, consequences on the line. And instead, basically, how high you roll will determine the quality of information that they give you. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a real a, a real good one. Whenever you're hacking, you can basically get a some good quality information for free and getting plus one dice on resistances, I can assure you is definitely a big positive. All right. Um, Theta, what about your, your mystic? Have you chosen a special ability? I think I have, but I want to know what our muscle captain is picked first. <laughs> All right, captain. Um, so I'm going with, I'm really, with the idea I have for the character, like I have specked out or is I'm helpful and he's, he's, he's stupid, but he's helpful, right? That's kind of uh -huh. it. So I was thinking going either bodyguard or backup. And I wanted to kind of, same with what we did earlier. I kind of wanted to talk to everyone, see what we thought about that. Okay. So with, bo with bodyguard, I can protect a crewmate and plus... 1d which i believe is i just add a dice to the yep, you add an extra dice yep and then when i take the damage or i take harm in general i think i i don't know what exactly it doesn't specify it just says when you take harm clear one stress yeah so that means um anytime you take harm it doesn't have to be specifically when you protect a crewmate but you know protecting your crewmates uh which, which the ability uh incentivizes you to uh you may be taking their harm for them um, but you get to clear stress anytime you do uh, take harm, which means you'll be in the fight for longer. Um, mm -hmm. And then what was the other ability you were considering? You want to back up. Uh, an mm -hmm. ally's push costs only one stress instead of two on any action you set up or assist with. So um, we've talked about assisting, which means you take a stress to give them one dice. Um, so any time that you did that, they would uh, be able to also push themselves and only spend one stress instead of two to get an extra dice. Or the other way you can use pushing yourself in the system, instead of giving yourself an extra dice, you can improve your position or effect. So I might say, oh, uh, yeah, you're, you're engaging with um, a gang of assassins. You're in a desperate situation and your effect is probably pretty limited to fight them hand to hand. And you might say, I'm gonna push myself and take some extra stress to make sure that I have at least a standard level of effect so that you know I'm actually gonna give as good as I get in that situation. Um, so backup as an ability lets you, whenever you assist someone or set them up and uh, set up actions uh, mean basically you, you roll an action yourself to, put them in a better situation. So that would improve their position or effect. Um, basically, yeah, I, I think they're both really interesting, like teamwork abilities, which is really
Um, yeah, I think like the difference is like whether you would rather have a stress relief valve on your person for helping everyone out, or if you want to uh, build up that stress and then come to me to relieve that. <laughs> Well, yeah. this seems this seems kind of like for one of them, it seems like it'd be a better early game. And I'm thinking I'm thinking bodyguard would be a little better in the early game. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Body, bo bodyguard is a is a pretty powerful. Really. Yeah, like, it'll definitely let you take risks a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And having a a plus one die, uh, so a protect is basically resisting the consequence of someone else's right. And so anytime you help someone out else out with a situation they got themselves into you'll be at an advantage for to to make sure that you don't take as much stress resisting that for them that makes sense yeah okay i'm gonna I think, go with bodyguard i think yeah good choice i think backups are a really interesting ability but it it will also make a lot more sense to you once you've uh played the system a little bit and you'll be like oh okay i know how to really utilize that to the maximum amount all right um our mystic you you've heard everyone else you got to make a choice all right i'm thinking way shield okay uh do you want to read that for us you can block blaster bolts with the way resist with resolve if you resist a blaster attack you may spend one stress to redirect fire and make an attack of your own with it man that is very cool this is some some serious not Jedi stuff. <laughs> You're the best not Jedi we've ever seen. <laughs> it's great. I love it. Uh, is no, is Jedi a thing in canon in the game? Like, like <laughs> have people like, seen Star Wars in the? Yeah, yeah. Real, some of our characters seen Star Wars and just like, dude, <laughs> nice force usage. And he's like, no, it's the way. Here's <laughs> here's the problem with your anti copyright thing is that every time you guys say the way, I think of that guy from Andromeda. Oh yeah, the right. wayest from Andromeda because that's yeah. literally the way. Yeah. yeah. So, look, um, the 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 book itself is legally distinct from Jedi and the Force, but we we know we know our touchstones, and that's yeah. fine. I'm pretty sure I, they had Jared... laser swords at Andromeda too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, cool, cool. So we now uh, have a feeling for our crew and their special abilities. Uh, the the next step is for us to. Oh, I need to scroll up. Um, you guys need to choose a heritage and a background for your characters. Now, um, the way this stuff works is um, this is sort of. It, in most games, your heritage and your background are kind of like background information, you know, that's your backstory or whatever. But in a Forged in the Dark games, you will specifically earn experience if you express your heritage or background in a particular way inside um, the game. So uh, the various heritages are Imperial, so you're, you were born at, inside the hegemony. Spacer, you were born on a spaceship and lived most of your life there. Colonists, so you you know you were originally sent out um, and as like part of a, a colonizing uh, crew on a planet. Uh, manufactured, which is as it sounds, um, you were created either maybe a clone in a lab or a you you might be a robot. Um, a wanderer. Uh, wandering amongst the stars from place to place, or you can choose to be a Xeno, which means you are of alien origin. Now, if you choose to play a Xeno, you can also choose to replace your starting ability. Um, and instead of whatever your class's starting ability is, you basically get to, um, you get an ability which allows you to spend stress to perform an inhuman feat that only members of your species can do. And we sort of like talk that through in in the moment. The example they have in the book is of a sort of like semi aquatic uh, fish person race of Xeno uh, called the Memish. And an example of something they might be able to do is like spend one stress to um, hold their breath for a really long time because they're used to living underwater, or 
in a really desperate situation, maybe they they tell you, oh, I want to. I, I believe that as a memish, I can try and survive out in the cold of space for a little longer than a human might be able to, because I'm used to sub-zero temperatures under the ocean or something. And I'd say that's very dangerous. Why don't you take three stress to to push yourself in that in that direction? Mm -hmm. um, and then as a background, you you have um, options like academic, labor, cult, gilder military, noble, or syndicate. Um, syndicate uh, here particularly um, refers to like crime and underground. Uh, the guilds are a, a big part of the setting on the legal side. Like they are um, the people who handle uh, like spaceship repair is the, is the starship guild. And then the uh, like the uh, counters guild is basically the bank of this the setting as such so if you have a background as like a family in the guild or something like that uh now when you pick a background you'll also need to like um detail it with your specific history so if you pick like your background as labor you could say yeah i used to mine for the hegemony on a backwater moon where they have like a space mine or whatever or you might say yeah i'm a i'm a noble and i'm like the a disinherited noble son of an important family or something like that. Um, yeah, so take take a second to um, pick your heritage and background. And Would you just put I these will... down in the notes section, or is there actually a way to select them on um, the sheet? Uh, up towards the top left, uh, underneath, like, look, there is heritage, background, and vice, and I believe those should be probably clickable. Uh, yeah, I haven't uh, been able I to click them. <laughs> no, you, you, yeah, I think in this particular case, you can't click them to select them, but if you if you click in the text box above them, you can just yeah, write it, just in. it in. The, in, it, in it. Oh, I didn't realize those were text boxes. They're just, like, yeah. invisible to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the text box is sort of invisible, but it's on the blue. Where it's on, the, on, the, on the left, right? Top left. That's it. That's it. Okay. So. So I just I just want to make sure that we all have mm -hmm. very equally stupid ideas for what we should <laughs> do here. Because <laughs> I'm I'm just with this system. I've already gone so far in my brain. This is okay. Funny. Well, why didn't you tell me what you're thinking? So okay. Uh, if you'll head over to my sheet. Uh, uh huh. I'm having a look. Um. Uh, I am a manufactured military person. Uh, with okay. My weird. Um, yeah, we'll get to vices in a sec. But so, so what? What does this mean as a manufactured military person? Were you well, like a clone soldier, or are you? Um, kind of different. Um, mm -hmm. so the idea I had, right? Yeah. Is it, in this future time, they've had to find a way to implant parts of people into the parts of animals, right? Okay. So I thought, if I'm muscle, I don't want to be some random human guy. I would uh -huh. like, like a gorilla with a human brain implanted. Cool, I'm down. So you're you're the captain of a spaceship who's actually a human in a gorilla body. Well, it's more like we share a body. I'm thinking, or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Lines. <laughs> you can also just take it a step further and say, like, yeah, we we just genetically modified a gorilla to be intelligent and decided that's you know we're, we're cutting it there. It's a day. It's science. It's over. Well, that yeah, that's my question. Are you are you sharing the body with the gorilla or are you? Uh, sharing. Uh, it's more like we try to do things together, and I feel like <laughs> we clash occasionally with like our end goal. You know, like he wants to get food. I want to live another day. It's just, it's. <laughs> this is, I, I am so on board for this idea. I think it's bizarre enough that um, uh, there, there are a lot of ways for me to, to push this. Uh, I, I never expected um, Harambe worship to go this direction, but I'm about it. I really want to hear the story of how you became a captain now. But we can do it later. Well, I mean, well, he just walked onto a ship and everyone left in terror. At that point, yeah, it just hit. Giant gorilla with a weird brain thing sticking out. I, I have a question for you. How how common is this procedure 
or are, are you uh, pretty off the off the beaten track sort of yeah, I guess the uh, illegal like, space the experiment the procedure who did I, it to you and why <laughs> uh it was i feel like it's a military procedure to enhance the human body right uh -huh. so the idea was i would become able to completely control this gorilla yeah. But what actually happened was the the gorilla's like brain wasn't taken out, so they kind of just it's it's two people. You share. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was this a voluntary procedure? Yeah, the ego to it, it than like completely replacing it. Yeah, that's a good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's like the gorilla control body, and I'm just like, hey, no, don't do that. You stop that right there. <laughs> As a mechanic, this actually works out because uh, you know it'd be pretty cool. I don't know. If you have any breakdowns in part of your machinery there, I can help you out. I'm yeah, digging I, it. I was, I was feeling this could probably be, I was probably like a first or second onto this procedure. You know, uh -huh. so do what they got to do. Because so. it sounds to me like this is like super illegal and like this yeah. is like a private military force trying to get a leg up on. Absolutely. The absolutely yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The whole brain thing was just, no. I just, I just, I don't know. I wanted to share that idea that I have. <laughs> I, I, I have an idea based on what I know of the factions in this game of who maybe created you. There's a, there's a, um, <laughs> not even, there's... not even just like who, who likes me, just who created me. Yeah. No. There, there, there is a guild called the Yaru that force grows clones for labor. And they, and they're also like just wacky mad scientists. I, oh, I can imagine yeah. that they were the, they're, they're the folks who are into like this kind of uncomfortable body modification stuff. Already don't like them. This is going to be great. Yeah. I'm glad we have a speaker now because if you were the face, <laughs> it would be, <laughs> what, we put you in like a giant trench coat. <laughs> And this is my companion, a 600-pound gorilla. I hope we can come to an agreement <laughs> while he looms over the negotiation. Because clearly this is not Star Wars, and we don't have a walking carpet with us. We instead have a gorilla <laughs> with a giant mechanical arm. Oh, oh dear. you got to be his best friend now, honestly. Yeah. Um, but let's see. Uh, right now, I think I'm torn between two ideas, one of which okay. would end up probably being a mixture between, like, a... Uh, a pissed off noble who, you know, doesn't appreciate the Empire very much anymore, or was mm -hmm. disinherited to some degree, probably would end up being a Princess Leia type. So it's very easy to fit okay. into that. Yeah. Uh, the other one, I probably want to figure out, like, which two of these work best for, like, some sort of homespun hero type or something. Some Someone who probably okay. has, like, uh, more connections to the people, probably fits better, like, the initial rebel aspect and could maybe reach out into that somehow. Uh, yeah, and I'd probably I'd probably use the picture of Jim Rayner or something for that. Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, think I mean, those are the two choices. I'm willing to let people debate that on me. Well, yeah, if you went for like the the disenfranchised nerve, or you'd probably like be like the imperial uh, heritage, whereas uh, like mm -hmm. the homespun hero, you could you probably be more like a a, a space or a colonist. Yeah. Um, the background would be interesting there as well. Like, did you come up through the mining camps, uh, uh, like in, in labor, or were you part of the military trying to resist in, uh, hegemonic? Um, yeah, and I think like picking that like highly determines the flavor of what's going to end up being uh, interacting with everybody. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very it, that that's really interesting. Um, the way nobility sort of works in in the setting and particularly in the sector there aren't a huge amounts of like high nobility in the procyon sector it basically um after the hegemony rolled through and sort of said yeah we own this shit they they picked one of the noble families house malclaith and said all right you guys run this sec the, the this sort of area of space these four sectors they're yours uh, right. These four systems, sorry, are yours, and we're going to call it Procyon or something like that. And so there is a governor um, who is a member of House Malclaith, um, and he's like the highest ranking person in uh, all of Procyon. But the other people who are nobles here tend to be people who are either on the outs with their family or have come to slum it because Procyon sector is known for gambling dens, drugs, and and various scum and villainy. Right. Um, yeah, so 
uh, there's definitely room to be that sort of disenfranchised noble trying to... It's a good sector to choose if you were going to push back. Yeah, so between those two, like, if we're working with a semi-bounty hunter-ish crew, uh, the noble obviously has the higher-up connections, brings people into jobs, gets jobs in the first place, whereas the homespun is more just like, I know the home territory, I know a guy, and that kind of thing. And maybe punches somebody. Uh, so which one fits better with everyone else so far, do you think? Well, I'll leave that to the crew. Well, seeing as I'm a giant gorilla, I would really appreciate some nobility. Somebody like some... with more class than the gorilla, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can definitely feel that. Uh, so tell you what, I'll go ahead and go with that. I think I probably have more memento for it, and I already got a yeah. picture ready, so it's perfect. Nice. All right. So we've got a, a disenfranchised noble, noble person. Um, lessons. What about you? And have you thought about your heritage and background? Oh yeah, I have that. Um, yeah. I mean, I wrote a, a spacer, but he mm-hmm. is, comes from a spacer family that's more like a nomadic miner clan. Okay. They go from like uh, basically they're like a sort of like mini space locus where they go from one large asteroid, they mine it, you know, they cl- make a claim, make a jump a claim, make a claim, mine it, you know, they make it big, spread the money across the clan, then, you know, people have their own shoots, they create their own little fleets, and they go to another and another system and another asteroid, and, you know, and they leave behind sort of these hallowed uh, asteroids when then people come in and, and put their livelihood and, 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 and start their homes and all that. And so, then, uh, this, this, like, community are they officially sanctioned by the guild uh yeah they're part of the guild of builders miners and shipwrights whether that's an official guild or one they they make for um, themselves to put a face to them you know there, yeah, there, there, is, there is a guild they're, they're called the star smiths guild okay uh, so they, they start smith yeah yeah but they're the kind of I mean, they're like the the outlaw face of it, in which they're yeah. like, oh, they're not they're, like they're the respectable. The yeah, they're not the people who you know have like uh, you know union meetings and you know mm-hmm. lobby politicians stuff like that. These are the they're the hardworking guys and gals who literally live in space. And what they do is they do have a fleet, but it's not. It's it's about you know, hey, there's a big asteroid over there. Let's put some structures in it around it, mine it, yeah. sell it, and then what tends to happen is it sort of break up because it's like a, a their clan, so it's not only yeah, right. the family; it's also like uh, spouses and family friends and all that. And it's when the clan goes very big, somebody says, "Okay, I'll take my hundred thousand credit cut, whatever, and I'll have my own little fleet and go over to that other rock and stuff like that, right?" Uh, or they get hit by pirates or something like that, and you know, sometimes they break up and form up again. But sort of this very fluid uh, clan. That's what they call the minor clans. Or the, or the, yeah, you know, nice. Uh, the nomad, they're nomadic, right? They don't stay in one place long. I mean, because planets need cool, you know, all I'm this material, it. right? And if things go worse to worse, they just slap a couple of engines to a big asteroid and send it into a planet. Said, "Well, don't mess with us," you know. Nice. So, and they're part, of, and part of Gilder. Uh, he's a Gilder, part of the Star Smith, right? So it's like the unsavory, dirty side of the guild, right? You know. Okay. That people don't really want to talk about it, even admit it's part of it. But that's what a lot of the money is <laughs> made, right? Yeah, just, that's just, it, right? Just massive amounts of iron and nickel and just sort of feeding the, the the basic needs of the and water as well of colonies and all that. Because, you know, um, very much uh, in the form of the expanse, especially the, what was the name of the original, uh, the Kant. And the crew yeah, of the yeah, camp or something right. like that. But yeah, this is right. based on a on a family, an extended family clan situation, rather than just being nice. somebody hired by a company. Right. Um, yeah. they yeah, they, like they, they're about, a, like they're about of it. Yeah, they're about family more than corporates. Like they, they they're like, yeah. oh no, we don't they pay the corporate structure. Yeah. You have to, yeah. But yeah. yeah, it's you know, it's about earning your way, it's about who you know. It's about living for the moment, right? It's about family and friends. You know, they have to deal with corporations, but they're more of a, almost have strong anarchist uh, leanings and anarchist socialist leanings in the sense of how they structure themselves because they're very family oriented in a sort of, you know, uh, you know bootstrap trapping kind of way, right? 
Um, yeah. So they, they live on the edge because, you know, corporations and actual guilds are like, oh, these people have dangerous ideas about doing stuff for their own, which is, yeah. Yeah. We need them, but. Cool. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. All right. Um, uh, Shannon, what about the your your mechanic? Is it the heritage and background? Yeah. Um. So for heritage, uh, uh, definitely a spacer doesn't spend much time, or at least didn't grow up spending much time on planet, mainly mm-hmm. in ship. Um, from a uh family of kind of mechanics, and so just mm-hmm. kind of was raised in it. Um, for background, I'm kind of not really sure between labor and syndicate like which exactly i guess i kind of see it as mm-hmm. definitely uh you know having a background as a mechanic taking like some legal some illegal jobs here and there and so i'm not yeah. sure which way to lean it like how that if it matters which way um that sounds to me more like it's probably like syndicate related if you if you're if you're already involved in like the illegal stuff and labor would be more like you you know you were a technician for the starsmith guild or something and you were like oh, okay under that yeah okay i'll go syndicate i mean yeah and like that the fact that you have connections in the illegal doesn't mean you can't do legal jobs when they happen to come up of course okay cool yeah interesting um, in fact, like what's really interesting is like one of the big um, sort of low-level syndicates is basically just like a loose connection of union bosses and stuff. So they are the people who were, the, you know, they work f- under the hegemony in the sense of like they, they are the labor camps and stuff, but they also have like a loose connection to each other. This is the, they're called the Cobalt Syndicate. And they just have their hand in all the pies, you know. Um, and oh man, I can't, I keep leaving you for last. Not on not on purpose. It is just the the way the screen is like. Um, it, you're sort of the furthest away from me. So, Theta, what about your background? And no worries, and... mine is the most bog standard you can think of. I am a wandering cultist. Okay. What did you're, you expect you're... from a waist? That's it. You, you got the 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 way in the blood. Chief Palpatine on us. Yeah. <laughs> I I mean I did think about noble for a little while there, but I think I'm working towards what I already have in mind for some of the other questions that come up during character creation. So like some objects you mm. keep with you, that sort of thing. So uh, I already have those in mind by picking up wanderer, and I'm a wayist. Yeah, okay. A wayist is basically a cult. So. The universe yeah, I mean, decides where we go. M- yeah, much... the way I've seen it or read it, there's a lot of different ways people look at the way anyway. Mm-hmm. So you could pick your way of the way, uh, regardless of whatever way you want to look at the way. Man, it's my way or the highway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so instead of being Chief Palpatine, you're uh, Cheat Frempatine, right? That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. No, you just wait till I get that thing where I can change, sway your mind, and then I'll be your friend, Patine. Yeah, I guess it would be important to figure out what your cult is and what your philosophy or religion is here. No, really, it's what the universe decides. I'm just, I'm a leaf on the wind. A very whims of fate kind of thing, then. Yeah. Yeah. That, That also, like, plays into the sort of philosophy of these kind of games where we play to find out, right? Like... Yes, mm-hmm. your may, maybe your cult of the way does have particular precepts, but we don't need to know what they are in advance. We can find out by the way your character behaves. Yeah, when they turn out to be the baby murdering cult that I've always known that they were, well, you'll be surprised, <laughs> and I will have known this whole time. I don't know. It's not baby murdering. It's baby kidnapping. Look, we throw the babies off of a cliff to see which one the universe decides should survive. Is that so wrong? The Jedi Spartans got off to a rough start. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a let's lot see, of people joining. Let's see the, which way they go. Oops. All the way down. Yeah, all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we've got a, a, a bit of a feel for our characters. It, I'm, I'm also looking... It, it looks like most of you have names for your characters. So even though that's sort of theoretically the last step, I, I don't mind us like going through so that I can refer to your characters by their names. Mm-hmm. Um... Let's go in reverse order. Uh, 30, your character. 
Byron Fang. Byron Fang, our our wandering mystic. Nice. Um, Sharon, your your mechanic. Yeah. Um, Kit Rayma. I just picked names from the thing, but works. No, that's fine. You don't have that. There is no. Uh, the 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 names in the book are a a, a bunch of suggestions, and they are good ones. They they have like um, ties into the genre, but people can choose whatever name they want to as well. I'm digging it. Ramos, our our, our um, spacer syndicate mechanic. I'm digging it. <laughs> All right. Um, I forgot which order we actually went in. I think lessons you were next. Your, uh, Rick Scoundrel's name. Uh, Rick Brazil. Rick Brazil. Digging it. And Triff. It should be. It should be on the. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. coming up on roll twenty. Yeah. Just uh, for our Ryan audience. Edwin Rockwood the seventh. <laughs> oh, of course, of the of the Rockwood family. Oh, yes. Ninth in line to the Rockwood uh, family fortune. 287th <laughs> in line to the Imperial Throat. <laughs> That's it, right? Uh, I thought uh, you were going to yeah, invert but... it there for a second. You're just the one of the sevenths. The sevenths <laughs> family. <laughs> oh, God. That... <laughs> his name is Edwin Rockwood. All one in word. And mm. the seventh is his family. Yeah, no. Um, of the Edgelord yeah, Sevens? Rockwood is my middle name. <laughs> Rockwood is my middle name. Uh, also my profession. Um, do you have a, a, a like alias or something you go by when you... Uh, uh, zero, of course, as per the inspiration. Yeah, nice. And finally, um, <laughs> our big b -b -b boy, Captain Gorilla Pants. Um, I was thinking Rado and Rado and the and the brain was it? No, the Brian. The Rado oh, and the, the Brian. Brian. <laughs> so who's who? Which one's Rado and which one's Brian? Uh, Rado is the gorilla, and the Brian is what the gorilla refers to as the brain. I see. Does um so is Rado was was that your person's name before they were the gorilla, or is that the gorilla's name for themselves? That's what the gorilla calls themselves. With with okay. their slightly heightened intelligence of probably like a three now, because gorillas aren't very fucking smart in the first. Uh, yeah. With like a slightly heightened intelligence, they chose that name out of like the four letters, just random. Yeah, no. Well, it's the human influence, right? Yeah. And uh, is your human brain's name actually Brian, or is that just Rado's no, interpretation? No, Rado just can't pronounce his name. Okay. So do do but when you introduce yourself to others, you introduce them yourself as Rado. Uh, Rado does. Uh, the br the brain probably doesn't say anything because he's embarrassed that he still exists. <laughs> interesting, very interesting. Cool, I'm digging it. So I got Captain Captain <laughs> Captain Rado. I I I'm fascinated to learn how this gorilla ended up in ownership of this ship, but we'll find out. All right, the next part of character creation um, is a simple one and a, a mechanical one, but also uh, one that I, I know players often labor over. You guys get to assign some action dots. So you guys are going to, on top of the three that you start with, as um, which are sort of like playbook defined, uh, you get to assign four additional action points. However, you cannot uh, begin with a rating higher than two. Uh, later on, when you um, level up, you can take a third dot in an action. But here at character creation, two is the highest you can go. Keep in mind, diversifying your points means you'll be better at resisting consequences. But uh, specializing in an ability means you will be better at getting what you want. Uh, I, you guys can start like adding those dots now, and I'll, I'll go around the circle. But is, very quickly, is there a I'm, place where it explains? Study. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm actually going to read through those now. But um, for your reference, actions in the are on I believe page ten. Where's the actual direct? Actual. Yeah, that's the rolling procedure. Where's the description? I don't know if you have the sheets handout. It's on like the first page of that. But I'll find. I'll find it in here for you. Um, action rolls. I bet. No. 
Oh, pay 64. Okay. 64. There you go. I was almost there. Yeah, I'll, I'll read them, read through them as well uh, for the, the audience benefit while you guys are choosing. So, the actions in alphabetical order are attune, uh, attuning to the way to communicate with non sentient species or robots, or to sense unseen danger or killing intent, or to safely handle precursor artifacts or remnants. This is the very mystic action. Uh, command allows you to command obedience with your force of personality. You might intimidate or threaten, or you might lead an action with non-player characters or order people to do what you want. Uh, when you consort, you uh, talk with your connections from your heritage, background, your friends or rivals in order to gain access to resources, information, people or places. This is the one about um, making friends and uh, dangerous enemies. When you doctor, you uh, heal someone who's been injured. You handle and identify substances through science or comfort, support, or elicit sympathy from people. When you hack, you engage with computers, systems, and digital locks, reprogramming robots or drones, jamming surveillance and communication. Helm is used for piloting vehicles, firing ship weaponry, plotting a jump or in-system course, or escaping a chasing ship. Rig is used for rigging together mechanical solutions, disabling, modifying, repairing, or creating mechanisms, disabling traps, picking locks, cracking safes, or rigging explosives. Scramble is used to uh, run away from danger or get into position. It can be lifting, running, climbing, jumping, or swimming, general athletics, and traversing harsh environments. When you scrap, you get into a blaster or physical combat. Uh, it's used for assaulting or holding positions, brawling, fighting with melee weapons, or rest. Um, skulking is done, uh, is about traversing unseen. It, you use skulk to Sneak around, pickpockets, employ subtle misdirection or sleight of hand. Uh, when you study, you uh, investigate a person or a document or an item with close scrutiny to gather information and apply knowledge. Gain a, it's used to gain deeper understandings or to re doing research. And finally, sway is about manipulating someone with charm, logic, disguise, or bluffing. It's about changing people's attitudes or behavior with manipulation or, in fact, seduction. All right, so um, let's go around and talk skill points. Uh, Byron, our mystic, where have you put your four extra skill points? Uh, action points, I should say. Uh, let's see here one moment. Uh, let's see, I put one into study. I put mm -hmm. two into scrap. And I put one into sway. Nice. So we've got a, a mystic who knows how to handle themselves, but can also um, do some hand wavy Jedi bullshit. Right. Hand wavy bullshit uh, is my bread and butter. <laughs> I'm about it. Uh, Edward Edwin Rockwood the seventh. Talk to me. Uh I was thinking two in Sway, one to Skulk, and one into Study. All right. Definitely the face of the party. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe I could shift that Study point around, maybe get two in Command, or maybe let the Gorilla do that and put it somewhere else. I really just am not sure. I feel like Balance is probably the better way to go here. I, I can say uh, having like your, your dots spread out uh, in that way, if you, if you don't have any points in Insight, uh, your your ability to indulge your vice, like uh, which is how you reduce stress during downtime, is going to be uh, pretty swingy because you always roll your lowest uh, your your lowest attribute, so either insight, prowess, or resolve. For... Right. So it would be good to have at least minimum one in everything. Yeah. Look, uh, if you if you want those rolls to. Um, if you want your character to build up stress quickly, it's okay to have no dice. Um, so the, the way stress works as like an ultimate resource in terms of the lifeline of your character, it's not as permanent as like HP in Dungeons and Dragons. When you reach stress, 
die or start mm-hmm. dying, what you do, what, what happens is you receive a trauma. Um, your character will, will permanently become cold or haunted or obsessed or paranoid or reckless or soft or unstable or vicious. And if you get to four traumas, your character can no longer, it, their, their life as a scoundrel becomes untenable. They, they're sort of too broken down and need to either retire or die. Um, however, getting into that first or second trauma is actually uh, mechanically potentially quite good for a character because you actually receive experience at the end of the session for struggling with issues from your various vice, uh, vices and traumas. So it's right, actually... It would be good not to build them up all at once. I think I'll go ahead no, and stick th- with study and later on get experience points and spread out even more and see what I get. Yeah. And, and basically, reaching the cap of your stress basically means your character's out of that particular scene that they happen to be in. So maybe until the end of the mission, uh, we don't see them on screen again because they they passed out or had to retreat back to the ship or something like that. All right. Um, uh, Rick Brazel, talk to me about your action dot. Uh, I have two on Helm, one on Scramble, one on Scrap. And that's it, because yeah, Skulk and Sway are yeah, you part start of with Sway for, for being yeah. a I put two on yeah. Helm because if our captain is uh, more of a fighter and he doesn't have yeah. any Helm, then somebody has to fly the ship, so it might as well be me, right? Yeah, nice. I, I like the idea that our, our space miner uh, knows how to fly the ship. I'm digging mm-hmm. it. All right. Um, and Kit? Yeah, sorry. Did you say you put two on? On helm. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Because I was gonna put at least one on helm if we had no no one with anything on helm. Uh-oh. So. Yeah. Look, helm helm is not just flying the ship; it's also firing the ship's weaponry. Okay. Oh, this is uh, always good to have a backup. Drive a car. So, like, it's not bad to have at least someone who can back up uh, if if your primary pilot goes down. Okay. Cool. Um. So I started with, like, as a character, uh, I started with two on rig and one on study. Um, so I added two on hack. Um, yep, that makes sense. That tracks with what we've learned about Kit so far. Um, and then one on helm to be able to, like, use the... Um, for the last one, I'm somewhat torn between consort and um, a tune, actually. Um, yeah, okay. I don't think we... I don't think we talked about vices yet, but I thought it would be interesting if the mm-hmm. vice for this character was um, just being super into the weird, and so like yeah, trying right. to understand it, trying to like merge it into the machinery in a way that kind of makes sense with why I would join your ship as a monkey, human, mechanical hybrid. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, um, yeah, what we talked about with. Kit like having some connections in the syndicate and stuff might make sense to have a dot in consort. But then like if you want it 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 sort of depends how long you want the trajectory on that weird stuff to be, right? Like if you start with a dot in the tune, it means you've already got a bit of experience in that area. No, that's true. That makes sense. I'll go with consort and build on tour. Cool. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm digging it. Um, yeah, uh, the stuff about vices, which we've just started touching on, we'll, we'll get to that very shortly. But um, uh, just before we do, um, Captain Rado, why don't you run us through which action dots you chose to to pick up? So um, I'm going to go with Doctor, two dots and Doctor, and then I want to okay. go one the dot. Gentle and one. Huh? The Gentle Giant. The Gentle Giant, a gorilla doctor. Yeah, yeah basically. I wanted to go with two dots and Doctor, one dot and Scramble. And one dot into a tune. Okay, nice. Uh, mate, that, that tracks with our, our weird um, gorilla muscle. And, so and our gorilla. captain technically doesn't have command. Uh, he starts with one dot in command as a monk. Okay, so you got the one. That's good. Okay. Yeah. We're tied I now. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't worried about it. So, And I'm not, yeah. not going to take helm because it just doesn't make sense to me for my character. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, starting as... So the way... The way um, uh, Scum and Villainy sort of uh, shakes out, you guys will start as a quality zero crew. You know, Uh, that's not to say you have no quality. It's to say that, like, in terms of how big you are as a a crew and how well known you are, you're you're sort of on the edges right now. Um, Which means that worst of the best. 
You know, the, well, hmm. Either that or the best. I don't know how this works, but the point is that they're probably it's probably just the five of you on the ship at the beginning of the game, unless you choose to take like a crew upgrade as part of the thing. Um, and being a start answer, you can probably operate the ship pretty easily uh, with just five people. Um, yeah, cool. All right. Uh, the last sort of stages of um, of character creation, we can sort of rock it through. Uh, if you look on your sheet, there is a list of friends. Um, these are five people in the sector that you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know all of them, but one of them is your close friend and longtime ally. They might be a family relation or a lover or uh, someone you've known your entire life. Uh, put the where, pick one of those five people and um, click the the up arrow next to them, and it should light up uh, mm -hmm. to indicate that they're your close friend. And then you need to pick one of these five people who's your rival. They're, they're, they're someone who you know well, but maybe you don't you don't get along. Your ex lovers, or uh, betrayed business partners, or uh, someone who's always getting in your way. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've talked about, and I think most of you have already chosen vice. So. Um, the your vice is basically your release valve for stress during downtime what does your character do in between missions uh between whether whether it's gambling or drugs or yeah getting involved with weird stuff in in space um i think they're sort of divided into seven sections there's faith gambling luxury obligation pleasure stupor or weird and you uh, you can sort of add like a detail to that, like we did with background, you know. So if you choose pleasure, it might be um, taking lovers or it might be uh, getting drunk um, or mm. it might be like luxury might be buying new fancy clothes or it might be uh, enjoying fancy clubs in various sectors, that kind of thing. Page, and then, sorry. Sorry? Page for the, the vices and whatnot? 60. 60? Okay, thanks. That's a tough one. It was easier yeah. to pick my rival than it is my vice. <laughs> and then um, the, the final stuff is just making sure your character has a name and uh, describing what they look like. We've already done names, so uh, I'll get you all to do that stuff. And I will... And then we, do we all have to pick an ally? An ally? I, don't, I can never pronounce this word right when I see it. Ally? No, 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 no. The uh, thing, the A L I A, that word. Oh, alias. Yep. Alias. alias. Thank you. My uh, you don't, you, you do not need to have an alias. Um, you you but already if you picked do... one. It's uh, your, your gorilla's name, basically. It, it's oh. Rado. That's fair, actually. Rado. Really? Rado. You don't tell anyone what your actual name is. I would have thought the brain was a great alias. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right on, right on the brain. That, yeah, yeah, actually. Off to conquer the universe. But my, I think no, it's. I think. I think shoot. there's like a, a degree of irony in there. Is refer to the brain of the operation. Um. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll go around and I will ask you guys about your. Your close friend and rival. Uh, let's start with a mechanic, Kit. Have you chosen a, a close friend and rival? Um, yeah, I don't have a real background for this, but I figured, That's cool. especially with a uh, consort, um, mm -hmm. Nisa, a previous employer, is a friend. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess Len, a black market dealer, is uh, some kind of... Sorry, what was that? Lynn, uh, yeah. black market dealer, some kind of rival. I maybe we were doing similar type jobs or something, and I don't know. One of us cheated. Yeah, them. right. And so Nisa, your previous employer, are they part of the part of the syndicate? Yeah, I think that would make sense. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And, and Lynn's a, a black market dealer. Interesting. Yeah, cool. I can imagine them as someone who's not into the way that you uh, keep modifying their stuff and stuff reselling yeah. it <laughs> all right um uh redo in the brain 
Yes. Uh, um, have you picked your Have you picked your close friend and rival? Oh, absolutely. Um, so Raider, Raider, sorry, not Raider, Raider, in love with the blaster pistol that he was given by the military. Um, in love I, with it. I he call it there. He gave it a name. Uh, he named it Krieger, and it's a very fine blaster pistol. Hang on, this is this is bizarre. Let me let me look this up. Surely it's meant to be a person. Uh, I'm so sorry that you guys. A have blast this up. the pistol. Is no, uh, it. Yeah, I love this. On, on the muscle playbook, one of your friends is your pistol. I'm yeah, so... yeah. <laughs> that's um, amazing. That's right. not your rival. <laughs> I, uh, man, Stress who wrote this game is is a legend. What a what a cool idea. Here they really are. I'm I'm so sorry. You are in love with that gun. I'm I'm about it. And then my my enemy, it's not my rival, my enemy. Uh, okay. Yazu, the crooked the crooked cop. Uh-huh. He's uh he's uh he's uh he's part of my backstory a little bit. I've already figured out how and why. Oh yeah. You'll yeah. have to share that with me so I can um do you uh, complicate your life. Right yeah, yeah, let's 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 bring it up. I, so, I th th this kind of game, I think like it it works best in the mode of dramatic irony where we know what the truth is and then like uncover it. So uh Yazu was kind of at one point our, our best friend. Uh -huh. Um and then what I kind of figured is uh Yazu was in the position to get this transformation, right? This whole okay, and then he kind of shoved it onto us somehow or some way. Ah, uh, okay. So brain doesn't like him. Straight up, the brain does not like him, and mm -hmm. then Rainbow doesn't give a crap because he's he's in love with his pistol. But that's not the point. <laughs> okay, yeah. and Yazu has ended up uh, a cop, has he? Uh. Yeah, he's a, he's a crooked cop now instead of um you know ex -military. he's like I, I what I've imagined for him is like ex military crooked cop doesn't really care about anyone else but himself and maybe his like his family I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Cool. All right. Uh, Byron, have you picked your your friend and rival? Yes, my friend is Blish, a fellow mystic. Okay. I uh I I want. My idea for him is that we were trained together in the ways of the mystic arts. We're fellow followers of the way. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen him in a long time because the way takes us in different ways. Way, 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 way. way. <laughs> and, uh, and my rival is Horrocks, a former teacher. The person who trained both of us. Because the only way that we're going to, you know, reach the end of our path is by defeating our former master. I see. So Horax Hor uh, has has some different ideas about the way the way should be used. Yes. The rule of two must prevail. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, Edwin, what about your, your friend and rival? Uh, I think the rival comes first. Obviously, it's got to be the noble. There's, another, there another has noble. to be other there has to be other nobles. There has to be drama. Maybe it's a member of the family, or maybe it's a rival family. Uh, I haven't decided. What do you think? Um, I, I, yeah, my, I lean towards like a, a rival family in, in sector. Maybe someone who you, who your family's done wrong by. And what's interesting about that kind of relationship mm -hmm. is like you may not have any part in why. Aaron is like mad at you, but you're they just see me it. as in the way, and if I yeah. die, their position's secure. It's That's not it. my fault, but I'm going to have to die. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. And what uh, about your close friend? For the friend, I figure I'm going to go for the diplomat. It's someone who might be able to tell me about, you know, what's going on in the greater galaxy, who's coming to the sector, what's going on within it. And mm -hmm. they're probably sympathetic to my plight of, well, you know, you kind of got thrown out the door. Yeah, okay, right. You cool. want to have a drink? You want to just go gambling, you know? <laughs> yeah. Now, the speaker is in a, a unique place with as far as um, friends and uh, stuff go in the system. Um, 
you only start with four, but you actually start with a blank space. So you can mm -hmm. fill in someone from your past when you feel inspired to do so. Um, also, like oh, yeah. there's an ability on the on the um, speaker playbook, I think it's called Old Friends, which is like basically anytime you land in a new location, you can add a new right, person. Right, and that will let it go out of, uh, out of control, which would be great. I'm highly mm. considering getting that one real soon too. Okay, cool. <laughs> And uh, finally, our scoundrel, Rick, uh, talk to me about your friend and rival. A uh, friend is Nyx. Uh, she is a money lender. Uh, mm -hmm. And basically, she's um, one of her favorite clients because we're on and off lovers. Uh, and also okay. because she likes to basically, I, I'm a gambler. That's my advice. So she kind of mm -hmm. plays vicariously through me. Uh, she's too I smart see. to actually bet her own money. But yeah. where she gave me money to me and I make good returns, then, you know, we can always party afterwards. Yeah. Uh, and when you don't, she can just make you pay up anyway. Exactly. Uh, Rin is my... Um, um, Your rival? Rival. Uh, smuggler. Mm -hmm. She's also a former lover. And part of the reason oh, why she's course. a former lover is because she found me with Nyx in bed. And, well, uh -huh. she I wasn't know. about to share. Also, the fact that... I was supposed to back her up, and that also was part of the reason why she wasn't willing to share was that there was a job that we were supposed to do together. I and never showed up because I was too up. drunk playing around with Nick's, so she got into trouble, and she blames me. I just say, well, there was no reason to rush the job. So, <laughs> you know. A story for the ages. Yeah, I love so it. it uh, you know. So she's on a, a rival smuggling crew now. And it's more of a one-sided rivalry in that uh, Rick says, you know, we can just, hey, baby, we can make this right any moment we want, right? But she's <laughs> she's not like she hates me. Like she wants to kill me, but it's like, it's the yeah. kind of thing like in a, in a, like in a cowboy movie when two friends show up and you don't know if they're going to hug or they're gonna, if someone's going to punch the other one. That's it. Mix yeah. is the, the hugging type. Rin is the punching type. <laughs> nice. Um, speaking of vices, uh, we've heard of we've heard of Rick's gambling problem. Uh, what about the rest of the crew? We we so, Kit, you you talked about um, having like a weird element to your vice. Uh, well, oh, sorry, I, I don't sorry. Know. my vice yep. is specific. It's hollow cards. It's called the Luna Dark Beast Collected Card CCG. Right, which is played professionally. Is this, in, is this Space Magic: The Gathering? Is that what? Yeah, which is played professionally you, yeah. in uh, in in casinos and other places because it's not like that. Like and you know, all CCGs, right? But of course, they're holographic cards, which means it's like playing. Like, what's, yeah. what's the name of the game in in Star Wars where they have the hollow table, but with cards? Uh, yeah, yeah. Passat. No, not Passat. Passat is a card game. That's a cool tour. It's uh, the, the table, little table in the Millennium Falcon, which they play I, with. I, uh, yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, well, it's sad, but with cards. So you okay. actually see the monsters sort of punch each other, and you can even add dice, and there's many ways to play it. Like, okay, you, I can play you this. You have hit on one of my personal vices. Yeah. Card game. So, so it's called... Uh, we'll Hol th same. This version is called Hollow Cards Luna Dark Beast, because it's a Luna great Dark collection Beast. of dark beasts from the dark, basically. All right, Fantastic nice. beast of the unway. Right. <laughs> On motorcycles is only when you start taking bets. Yeah, <laughs> I see. All right, and um, sorry, uh, Kit. You, yeah, we were talking about your sorry, yeah. weird fascination with mechanics and stuff. Yeah, I don't have it as fully fleshed out as that. Um, but okay. basically, yeah, interest in ur artifacts and yeah, experiments right. with them right. and that kind of stuff. Yeah, nice, cool. That there's some definitely some interesting space in there for find out more about the precursors. Nice, um, uh, Byron. What's your your vice? Uh, I went with the uh, the weird category mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because I've already been looking at the items that you start the game with, your loadout stuff, uh -huh. uh, and I thought that my loadout stuff uh, offerings and memento of your travels are roll them into one, and basically I, what I do is every planet that I touch, I gather a pebble, or some memento of their surface, if it's not a world that I can grab a pebble from, and I collect them into uh -huh. bowls, right? And that my uh, vice observance is that I meditate surrounded by these bowls of pebbles from all my travels. Yeah, interesting. Cool, I like it. We'll see how that um, 
ends up complicating your life trying yeah. to pick up pebbles on various planets. It's a collection of my way. It turns out that they're not pebbles, they're eggs. Uh -oh. Yes, so we get the alien scene from the movie. <laughs> also, that you can hold a connection in them through the way, so when you get your Death Star, you can target them all at once. Well, uh, my master has to be on one of these worlds. Now he'll be on none of these worlds. Um, Edwin, talk to me about your vice. Uh, it, it was a little difficult choice. I think I was going to go for high-stakes card games. Mm -hmm. where I just put literally everything I possibly can on the line. Uh, and now that we have Luna the Dark Beast, I I'm going to be playing that. I'm going to have a yeah. deck. <laughs> nice. Are, are you a more casual player than than? Rick, I'm probably more it... casual when it comes to like that specific game, but you yeah. know, if someone's doing a round of poker, I'm just like, and I bet the ship and the lives oh, of God. all my friends. And... <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Uh, and I bet Aaron's uh, noble, noble title. She'll, she'll be fine. Just go contact her afterwards. Okay. <laughs> cool. I can already see where that's headed. And finally, um, Captain Rado, what's your advice? So, um, as much of a jokey kind of character, I, I like joke characters and having fun with little spits and spats yeah. with them. I always like to complex or make them a little more complicated than they need to be and more like, you know, in depth. Uh, so I went with obligation. Um, uh -huh. Because, you know, even though the brain is now just a brain on part of a gorilla, he still has a family, right? He still has people that he needs to take care of. So right. he sends is home. It, is, it, is it, so it's your, your previous family before the, the operation, yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah, before, before all that. Um, so he's mm -hmm. he's never gonna he his whole thing is never gonna be seen by them ever again. He's never gonna let them look upon his just disgusting new form. But mm -hmm. he'll send home money whenever he can uh, to make sure that they're living life like they should be, like kings and queens, and you know should never have to go through anything hard like he. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm I'm digging it. All right, cool. Um, how are we going for time? It's is it's now a good time, but it, is, is it a good time to have like a, a short break? Though, whenever, whatever you want, man, you're in charge. <laughs> yeah, let, let's take a five minute break, uh, so that we can everyone can use the bathroom or get some water or anything they need. Um, mm -hmm. and we will resume, uh, and we'll finish off our uh, creating our ship and complicating your lives with the various factions. All right. All right. See you in a few minutes. Ciao.